Hello and welcome to the show with no name. The show with no name was dreamed up by myself and my partner in crime, Theoni Rossianos, to bring to you not-for-profits, charities, community fundraisers, service clubs, people in the community who are doing amazing things to help people and communities around them to make the world a better place. Now, my partner in crime, Theoni, is off making her little patch of the world a better place this morning. Her son uh, broke his finger a couple of weeks ago and she's had a couple of, he's had a couple of rounds of surgery on it. And so at this very moment, she would be sitting in the um, waiting room, I would imagine, at uh, the Women's and Children's Hospital doing some follow-up appointments for his surgery. So all the best to you, Nick. Let's hope your finger gets healed very, very fast. And Theoni, if you're here, just jump in if you in or if you're not here, I can imagine that the, you would be fast tracked in because we also have a uh, women in business Adelaide meetup uh, today at uh, in Plimpton at the Seven Effect Training Rooms and so we've and I'm in Queensland so we, we've tried to um, sort of split ourselves about 16 different ways and thanks to Tony Everard for jumping in and helping out with that. Marianne hello Roz is here hey you Roz Sophie hello hello we would love for your help to get the word out there about the amazing things that people are doing. Today we are talking with a lovely uh, lady. She is a also uh, in our community, Women in Business Adelaide, and she is a one, it's, it's Jane Whiting, I'll bring her up in a moment. She is a one consciousness transformer and a senior student of the o and Academy in India, which is world-renowned wisdom, philosophy and meditations, or a world-renowned wisdom, philosophy and meditation school for the awakening and transformation of humanity. Now, Jane is also a relationship coach and art of feminine presence teacher. However, today she is here to talk about the free online course from the O&O Academy in India for Youth called World Youth Organization. So without further ado, let me pop Jane into the picture with us. Do, please do remember that the more people that hear about this type of thing, the better our world will be. So welcome, Jane. Thanks so much, Adair. Thanks so much for having me again today. It's great to be here. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm really interested in hearing about this online course for the O&O Academy. But first, let's have a little chat about you. I know we have spoken before and you have been on community TV with Adair. And this is your first time on our charity, not-for-profit community service show, the show with no name. And I, so I am familiar with what you do, but I'm just, for people who don't know, um, can you just share a little bit about your background and how you came to be working and actually going to India and working with this organisation? Okay, thanks so much, Adair. Well, basically, I guess I had a lot of baggage. I was pretty lost. Um, Moving into adolescence, I was very rebellious and I was just uh, really struggling. I had completely cut myself off from, I was raised a Catholic and I'd completely cut myself off from all religion and all spiritual, spirituality. And life was pretty barren, actually. And I got married and had children and I really struggled in my relationships. It was, I had so much anger and, and resentment and a very low sense of worth. And so I started after a while, I realised I had to make some big changes in my life. I was like, you know, people didn't, weren't going to want to be my friend and I wasn't, my husband wouldn't want to be with me and I didn't want to pass on my baggage to my children. So I started looking into spirituality and started meditating and reading books and doing courses and it really helped me a lot. But then about, say, 12 years ago, I came across the o and Academy and I just came across a program they had here in Adelaide and I just thought, oh, I can't get enough of this. I want more of this. And so within a very short amount of time, I was heading off to India to do their programs and it really was just changed my life in so many ways, changed my relationships, changed my inner world, how I see myself, 
and how I now take know that I have to take responsibility for everything that's going on in my life. I can be in a good state regardless of what's happening in the world around me. My state is not dependent, you know, upon others. It, it's all up to me. And that's a tremendous gift because so many of us in the world feel like we're victim. There's so many problems when we look at the world. It can be quite overwhelming, especially if you, you know, watch the mainstream media. All we seem to hear about is problems, <clears throat> which yeah. is, you know, is, no wonder there are so many people on antidepressants and anti-anxiety pills because, you know, and that really is becoming an increasing problem in the world. So it really is up to us to take the power back that we hold to create change, first within ourselves and then in the world around us and the world at large. I think that's amazing that we have got this. It's almost like a collective consciousness that we, we're using and social media to raise the, the consciousness of the planet around an alternative way of being. And uh, when you were talking earlier, I was just thinking, yep, I can relate to that, I can relate to that, I can relate to that. And it is something when you caught you get caught up in mainstream and all the com competition and all the um, it, it, all the what the way of the negative energy, the way of being is um, that is normal for us. <coughs> Excuse me. And when we step out of that and we look for alternative ways of being, it feels almost cultish. Mm. When we don't realise that we're actually embedded in a giant cult anyway, which is just, I, I think the more that we can actually share the love and help help people understand that there is an alter, alternate way of being and an alternate way of, of uh, living our lives that actually is far more productive and far more rewarding, it, uh, it is far more productive and far more rewarding. So we'll talk a little bit about the I want to know Academy now that's it's based in India mm -hmm. uh, it's based on um, the the philosophy and so what well let's start let's start here what does O and O stand for is that anything in yes oneness and one world academy it's a, oh, an abbreviation of that so yeah um, and the world youth change makers program is actually a charitable initiative of the founders of the ONO Academy and their 15-year-old daughter. So they're on a mission to um, empower youth because, let's be honest, the youth of today are facing unprecedented problems. And I must admit that really concerns me with children and grandchildren now. I am worried about the world that they are entering into. So I feel drawn very strongly to do whatever I can to um, help them and help the youth of today because many of them are have a complete disconnection with their inner world. They are mm. so, um, technology has really taken over. And like you said, Adair, it has so many wonderful aspects to it, but we need to use it wisely. And, you know, with the world of um, automation and technology, we're having less and less human contact and connection. And it's causing a lot of loneliness. And mm. the thing for the youth of today is that there's so many, like the drugs, so, you know, they're faced with drug issues that, you know, just weren't there as nearly as much, I don't believe, certainly for my generation. So for many of them, I know it's a huge problem. I've been speaking to teachers in schools and people in the education department, and they say that this well-being of youth is a really big problem, like the mental health and well-being of them. So, for example, apparently one in five youth under the age, by the, by the time, sorry, my dog's in here, by the time they've reached <laughs> age, We'll have Don't worry with and children. children. I've got my grandkids <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> I thought he was, I didn't know he was here. Um, well, we so I'm <laughs> making a good life. <laughs> Sorry, you were saying, so uh, the, between the ages of five to... No, uh, sorry, one in five youth by the time they reach 18 has suffered one some kind of emotional or mental illness. And they say that um, suicide is the biggest killer of male youth under 25 years of age. So clearly we have, you know, we have a big problem here. And so that's why I'm so excited about this World Youth Changemakers program that, the, um, that is being offered 
that uh, is a free online program for youth from 15 years and older. So it helps. So uh, I just want to, so yeah, being an online program and it's, uh, we'll get, I think yeah, we've put a website link up there. I haven't popped the uh, page, Facebook page link in. So we'll talk about how we access that in a moment. Um, in terms of the the program, it's a, it's active and now, and people we can talk about what's in it, um, and also how what is it launched yet, or is it it's still being launched, and how how does that work? Okay, so yes, it has been launched, and um, quite a few programs have been uh, broadcast, I suppose, around the world. It's broadcast by guides in India who have been spiritual teachers for 20 years or more so they're very they're in a really good state and they have you know tremendous wisdom and love and concern and care compassion for humanity and they've worked a lot with youth as well they, they do enormous um, outreach of their work in India also so they have a really good understanding of youth and this program is hasn't been launched yet in Australia but I'm hoping to change that very soon so what it is it's a free online program the one that I watched that I was a part of went for nearly four hours, um, although they say it's a three-hour program. Now, it is a free program and it's for groups of students. So it's for bodies of students to come together and learn collectively about, um, you know, developing this inner resilience and paying a lot more attention to their inner world. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I recognise the fact that no matter what is going on in their life, they have a choice and then giving them tools that will help them to be in a good state and respond intelligently from a good place rather than create more problems and conflict in their outer world. So the programs are structured so that they they run live and they actually uh, they do blocks? Are they facilitated? So, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, no, great question. It's via Zoom and mm -hmm. so that and the, you need a microphone so that the students can ask questions and engage and give feedback to the guide, mm -hmm. to the guide that's running the program because they do reflection, self-reflection. They do a group, the program that I watched, they did a group exercise where they formed a circle and talked about relationships and um, and they encourage engagement from the students as well. And so who who assembles these groups of children? Is it run, uh, children's? <laughs> these groups of kids, is it run through schools or would it be something that, say, um, um, some enterprising young person say, oh, I've got a group of friends that I would love to get together and just do it through in, in my lounge with, you know, so how, how does that look? Okay, so it's run through schools, universities, colleges. The program that I watched was actually a dance school in South Africa that gathered their students together and it was just fantastic to watch the engagement and the lighting up on the faces of the youth that were watching the program as they really started to have insights and have a shift in the way they were looking at the world. So it's, um, in, you know, large group, the larger the better because their resources are limited. I think, you know, they're looking mm -hmm. for groups. 50 to 100. So I'm looking for teachers and people who have contacts in schools and colleges and universities, people who have, um, you know, some form of um, entry into, mm -hmm. you know, these, these uh, student places of education where um, we can, you know, really make a difference. So... So how many advocates are there out there doing what you're doing, Jane? Because this is, you know, this is pretty much grassroots stuff, isn't it? It, it's, it depends on people like you who have the access to the, the resources and the networks and the contacts um, because they would, I would imagine there's no budget for it and it was just going to go out by, um, uh, by word of mouth. Is that, is that a correct assumption to make? <laughs> Well, yes, um, well, it, it's an international, there's a World Youth Changemakers um, organisation in India that's being run from India and they have a pretty broad outreach which is growing. So, 
students from you know around the world gather and go to these programs okay. so it's so it's just a matter of people who've done the program who who've been to India who are aware or just people who hear about it it's really just mm -hmm. about putting the feelers out because school from what I'm hearing the schools and colleges are very aware of the problems that youth are facing today and they're looking for solutions they're looking for ways yeah. that they can help kids so it's just finding the pastoral care workers or the you know the people the student well-being officers the right people who are willing to get a group together and organize this program yeah yeah so the student counselors and like you said the pastoral care workers and Social and they're targeting ages 15 so it would be schools uh kids in years 10 11 and 12 um i'm, I'm speaking southern hemisphere language here because i think it's the, the education system is different in uh in the us um and you're saying in terms of the content that they do so it's a block of time that they run the whole course through um done by zoom and what sort of things would they do so if you could sort of take us through what a typical session would look like Okay. Uh, yep. So, well, they start off by explaining, helping the, the youth realize that they, no matter what has happened in their life, they can, they do have the power inside of them to create change within themselves, and create change in their relationships, in their families, in their circle of friends, and and the world at large. So they start off with instilling a very strong message of hope for the youth, and helping them to understand that out of circumstances our you know the way that we respond in situations is what creates what's going on in our life and the areas that they cover that they reflect on our education so they look at their relationships with their teachers and how they're responding in class their attitude towards their study they look at their body and their health how they regard their body how do they treat their body how do they take care of themselves how do they approach the day they look at their relationships. They talk about their relationships with themselves. How do they see themselves? What are the messages they're giving, That you know, that inner voice that they're taking on belief systems about themselves? And what state are they coming from in relationships? How are they responding to their parents and their friends and their family? You know, are they? how do they respond in challenges? You know, are they coming from anger and hurt and from their past experiences or are they able to be present with what's going on? They talk about the importance of contribution, how, you know, when you when you help others, you know, do you care that, you know, do you care for the happiness of others? And are you sensitive to the pain of others? Because these are tremendously important tools that we need to have to have a happy life, basically. For insensitive mm. to what's going on to others, you know, like a, a youth who's sensitive to the people around them, to their families, their parents, their friends, has a tremendous gift that can, um, you know, turn situ conflicted situations around. And their emotions, you know, what state are they living from? Are, are they living from a state of anger and aggression and um, hurt and resentment and, you know, feeling like a victim in the world? Or are they a happy person? Mm. And then and not because, about having choices too. I think that's great. Yep. Keep going. Yeah. So, and, you know, look, we all have challenges in life. We all have inner conflict. It's just having the resilience and the tools, learning ways to manage that. And mm. in this program, they teach them two really powerful meditations. So one of them's called the Serene Mind, which is only of like a three-minute meditation, very short meditation that actually affects the neurobiology of the brain and quietens that mind chatter, that chaotic part of the brain mm -hmm. and, and um, enhances the part of the brain that is aligned with peace and joy and inner calm. So, And this is what I'm being told is that the educational bodies, the student educational bodies want programs that, are, that have a scientific backing to them and the good news about this mm -hmm. work this work from the world you change makers is that it is scientifically backed yes. it is you know they 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 know what they they know what they're doing and the results are incredible 
No, I guess the uh, it, it sounds a lot like uh, neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis and modern psychology that um, you know from the the proponents of people like Martin Seligman who who had the positive psychology and the uh, resilience training. He uh, set that up in South Australia actually and uh, as a thinker in residence and it's a lot of that sounds like it's woven into it and as a parent of a 17 year old boy who had had did his certification in hypnotherapy at 13 and became a NLP master practitioner at age 15 you can see that you can equip your child with the school the tools and the knowledge to be resilient, but if they're doing it in isolation, one of the biggest things that we've noticed with what we've done as like myself and his father, what we've done as his parents is the rest of the, you, if you're not doing it in groups and learning this stuff together and actually supporting each other through it, you become a bit like a fish out of water and that's sort of what happened to, to him and I think there is immense value in actually having the block training and um, and having a group of students go through it. What sort of backup and after do they have things that they would do to continue the practices? Because I think that's critically important and for myself as well as someone who studies this type of thing and 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 actively tries to practice <laughs> what is it do or not there is no try um <laughs> i try i i actively get reminded to live it um but for a teenager i think it would be incredibly difficult is there follow-up or is that the beauty of doing it in the community like doing it in a group setting 50 to 100 students and then they can help each other continue to follow up and embed those new that new knowledge and the new ways of doing and thinking uh, into their collective psyche if you like is there is that yeah. what sort of yeah there is that's a great question just before I answer that question I just wanted to add something that I think is really important that uh, because of what you were just saying there is that the importance the thing is that with um, the more that you become aligned within, the more that the youth become have that inner alignment, that awareness of what's going on inside of them and awareness mm. of their responses of how they're reacting to the people around them and the more sensitive they feel towards others and the more connected they feel, the more they feel, they just naturally feel that they're just mm. not an isolated individual but that everything is Everyone's connected and everyone's affecting everyone else. And these are tremendous qualities for um, yeah. leadership. And this is what we need in the world. We need, this is why it's called World Youth Change Makers. This is about creating change first and foremost within themselves and within their, you know, their, the people in their close environment, their families and their social circles. But it's more than that. It's it's um, cultivating a, an awareness and a an inner desire to create change in the world, to step up and be strong leadership because it's so needed right now. Yes. The world is struggling so much and especially, among, you know, as I said, amongst the youth and the problems that they're facing in today's world. So I just really wanted to emphasise that because it, it's such a fantastic program. It, it's so important. And, yes, they do. They are, they've just announced that they're going to be offering monthly calls, mm -hmm. which is um, I think it's on a Sunday. Actually, I'm not sure of the time zone differences, so I'd have to find out. But they're going to be offering free monthly calls, follow-up calls for the students that have done this um, program online. Mm -hmm. And also they do run a program in India, which is a deepening of the World Youth Changemaker program online, which is a seven-day program. And a friend of mine's daughter actually did that very oh, wow. recently. And <clears throat> I'll give you I'll give you an example example of how powerful this program is. If you've got a couple of minutes, it won't take long. Yes, go for it. Yeah. So she came back from this doing the World Youth Changemaker program, and she went out. She was at home and she was going off to work. Went out to get into her car, and somebody had smashed into her car and not and left it. You know, so she couldn't drive it, and there was no note. It was just a hit and run. 
So anyway, immediately she went into rage and anger because she was she couldn't go to work, she wouldn't get paid, she didn't have insurance, she doesn't have a lot of money, she'd just been overseas, you know, all this. So immediately that old pattern came in of, you know, I'm a victim, why me, how dare they? And she went inside and she sat down and she did the serene mind meditation. But all of a sudden, which takes a couple of minutes, all of a sudden her attitude come, her inner, um, what was going on inside of her completely shifted and yeah. she felt this absolute sense of peace and calm. And she rang her mother and her mother took her to the police station and she said she had this sense of joy. It was just ridiculous, really, considering what had happened. It was such a yeah. gift for her and so different to how she would have responded previously mm. if she yeah. hadn't known about these tools and done these processes. That This just goes to show that the brain changes really do happen because she said it yeah. just... You know, she did the process and, and the res a completely altered response came. So they went to the police station and she said the police were so moved by the way she was. She was in a beautiful state. She was smiling and loving and kind and she wasn't stressed or angry. And one of the police officers went out the back and made her a flower. out. You know how they make balloon um, shapes and make things? They made her this beautiful flower out of a balloon and came out and gave it to her. So, oh, you know, an incredible story. And then the way that she handled it when she actually did find out who the person was that hit her, it was a neighbour who didn't own up, somebody else let her know. And the way that she handled it was, a, she said it was just unbelievable, like she would never have handled it with such grace. And so she ended up, this woman, even though she wouldn't own up to hitting her car, she still ended up paying, got her insurance company to fix her car for her. So, you know, mm. it just, it, the outcome was so different to what it would have been if she hadn't had these tools and the and the resources and the inner alignment and awareness to look at things differently. Yeah, I I think that's a beautiful story because it you know I mean we do have that choice about how we respond, but if we don't know we have those choices, and it, like you said, if she if she stayed angry and stuck in that spot, you know. It, it, the, the, she would go through the process regardless, and uh, and you you take you take yourself through there with it. So I think that's amazing. So fantastic story. Who oh, we are out of time. What's the best? We did talk about this. The best way for people because you're looking for schools and universities, and you said what well, dance clubs, groups of children, fifty to a hundred between the ages of fifteen. And what's the upper limit? Oh, Is it late? I think it's twenty eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 15 to 28. So, yeah. so any any sort of clubs, and I would imagine that there are uh, Rotaract clubs that would be interested youth in clubs. youth clubs yeah. uh, tapping into this. So so if you are watching this, if you are here live, uh, welcome. We're about to wind it up. If you are on replay, on the replay, thank you for joining us. If you are watching on Binge Networks through one of our 50 channels of TV on demand anywhere in the world, which is not on Facebook, but it is, um, it is it goes out through Binge Networks uh, on your smart TV, please get in touch with the is it World Youth Change Actually, management. No, contact me. Con contact, contact me. Contact so, Jane. We'll see yeah. that uh, there, that there is um, a detail. Well, there's a link above. So contact Jane, or if you're on the binge networks, the link is below. At, uh, and we will see if we can organise. Well, Jane will organise for somebody to come and run the program for your group of youth or young people and be, and help the world become a better place through the change maker the world youth change maker program so excellent to have you here jane thank you so much for joining us today thank you so much adair for having me really Don't appreciate it i'll just drop you out wind this up and then we'll just chat in the uh, in a moment So Jane Whiting from the representing the O and Academy and the World Youth Change Maker program for ages fifteen to twenty eight, who uh, taught teaching about resilience and taking responsibility for your emotions and raising the vibration of the planet by the way we react to external events. In a nutshell, and uh, again. 
I'm Adair Palmer and we do have the partner in crime, Theone, is playing in the comments down below. So thank you, Theone, for popping in. And also I do hope Nick's uh, finger is getting better. It's, this is the show with no name and we are live every Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Australian Central Standard Time. And if you would like to have your charity, not-for-profit, service club, cause or anything that you are doing, if you're a community fundraiser, uh, have uh, some extra exposure and reach out to more people that you may not normally reach out to and connect with, please do get in touch with either myself or Theone Rossianos and we will organise to have you as a guest on the show. I'm Adair Palmer. Thank you very much. We'll see you next Thursday.